It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyden, and this is 5.45 Live. Tonight, the latest VYVVT drama, including The Appeal, another tragic pedestrian auto accident in Brattleboro, long-awaited Harris Hill footage, and more. And remember, we do it all in 15 minutes, so stick with us. <laughs> Welcome back to this February 24th, 2012 edition of 545 Live. That's footage of this weekend's annual Domino Day at the Brattleboro Museum and Arts Center, shot by BCTV producer Ian Keel. The full top link from this year, along with years past, will soon be available on the museum's YouTube channel, so look for it next week, searching uh, Brattleboro Museum and Arts Center and Dominoes. All right. Uh, with that, we'll go into the headlines. A deadly car accident last night on Canal Street has claimed the life of 64-year-old Gary Lumbra, an Austin School alum and longtime volunteer for the Agape Christian Fellowship, the church he was on his way home from when he was struck at a crosswalk by an unidentified 74-year-old woman. Joe Bushy was out on the scene to film it last night. That's the footage you're looking at now. This becomes the fourth pedestrian traffic accident in the downtown area since Christmas. And our thoughts go out to the family and to the Agape Christian Fellowship. All right, starting the roundup for tonight, the 2012 Harris Hill festivities are now a week behind us, but we still got a wealth of great footage. First time I was here as a spectator, and I worked the concession stand, was 1974. Does it bring back memories for yeah, you? Yeah, it brings back memories, and, and I used to want to jump again, but no longer. And now I just get, I get excited, but I don't want to jump. You wouldn't <laughs> want to go down the new hill? No way, no way. <laughs> Locals Spencer Knickerbocker and Willie Graves both placed in the top five, with Spencer taking silver in the Fred Harris Memorial Tournament with a total of 196.5, and Graves taking fourth place in the Pepsi Challenge with a score of 159. Uh, you can catch Joe's full piece hosted by Daryl Pillsbury, complete with all the competition fun and plenty of jumper interviews next week on BCTV Channel 8 or on our video on demand at brattlebrotv.org. All right, moving on, the question on many Vermonters' minds uh, was answered last week when Attorney General William Sorrell announced that the state would appeal the ruling from Judge Murtha in Entergy's lawsuit against the state of Vermont and its Act 160 legislation. In a statement released on his Facebook page following the announcement, Governor Shumlin said, quote, I support the Attorney General's work in getting a positive result on the appeal. My administration will be focusing on the state's continuing authority over Vermont Yankee. In a pre-Mirtha decision special, CNN explored the history of the Mark I nuclear reactor used to build several plants, including Vermont Yankee and, most notably, Fukushima. For her piece, CNN reporter Amber Lyne spoke to many Vermonters, including Senator Sanders and Attorney General William Sorrell. Entergy's tried to have its cake and eat it too, if you will. They uh, made promises to induce the state, uh, state legislature, the Public Service Board to uh, give them permission to, to operate, uh, to store more spent fuels, and then when the state exercised its authority under those agreements and under the law, uh, and it didn't go Entergy's way, then Entergy backed out of the deals. William Sorrell talking to CNN's Amber Lyon in a piece just posted on Bernie's official YouTube channel, Senator Sanders, all one word. And uh, regardless of how you feel about his politics, if you want to stay in touch with your representatives, uh, it's easier than ever now. Uh, the governor, Senator Sanders, and Patrick Leahy all have terrific media teams posting on their YouTube channels and Facebook pages regularly. For those of us with uh, some attention span issues, this is perfect. They post one to two minute clips from press conferences. Uh, it's really a great way to stay in touch. So again, whether you agree or disagree politically, subscribe. It's a great way to communicate. Of course, we'll put uh, our favorites of those clips up on each of our 545 live shows. All right. For anyone out there hoping the Kipling Cinema would make another comeback, the outlook is not good at Wednesday's Development Review Board meeting. The board approved a plan uh, for demolition of the cinema, which closed uh, unexpectedly earlier this year. That would make way for a $1.2 million, 16,000-foot Aldi discount grocer's store. 
The vote includes a demolition. demolition. There is a demolition plan that's included here. There was uh, um, constraints on that demolition in terms of the amount of land that, or sorry, the amount of area that can be touched. And there's a plan here for managing it. All right, well, the race for Brattleboro Select Board has been heating up with candidates talking it up on BCTV with forums sponsored by WTSA and the League of Women Voters. But the race for the one-year seat got a cool down when newcomer William Morlock dropped out, leaving incumbents Chris Chapman and Dick DeGray an uncontested path to the two available seats. The race for the three-year seat, however, remains alive with longtime DRB member Catherine Turnus taking on incumbent David Gardenstein. I'd like to continue serving on the Select Board for three years more in order to continue the progress that we've made over this difficult year. I think that I would consider myself a part of the community that I feel needs to be addressed and that is the <laughs> people who are living on very limited income and not just seniors but as well as families. Ternus and Gardenstein talking at the League of Women Voters forum last week. You can watch the complete forum along with WTSA's night on BCTV Channel 10 later tonight or find them along with all local programming and BCTV's video on demand archive at brattlebrotv.org. All right, next up, the local group Hempfully Green are on a mission to keep producers of industrial hemp safe from the long arm of the DEA. Yesterday we spoke with Hempfully Green co-founder Emily Payton who discussed the group's latest efforts, releasing a proclamation stating a path forward for the use of the material Payton says has a bevy of practical uses. If the DEA or the federal government has uh, any intentions to criminalize anybody for growing it or any uh, objections to the restoral of industrial hemp, that they need to publish those objections and the reasons for those objections in a similarly uh, public manner. You can find out more about the proclamation and about the many uses for industrial hemp at hempfullygreen.com. All right, and with that, we'll move on to traffic and weather. We'll start with our high-tech traffic report powered by Enrix and Beat the Traffic. If we take a look at the grid here up on the screen behind me, and uh, I'll throw it up on the screen here as well, red uh, is standstill traffic, orange heavily congested but good to go, and uh, green means you are flying. All right, to the problem area for today, as it often is, is the uh, strip between High Street and Canal Street. That's solid red, means you're going nowhere anytime soon coming through downtown. Though Putney Road, uh, Route 9 out to Keene, Western Ave, and Canal Street are all moving, though they're in the orange. So, uh... Heavy traffic there. 91 traffic goers are good to go, as they often are. That's our traffic report. Uh, and with that, we'll move right on to weather. We'll take a look at the forecast. Um, but first, for anyone who has uh, economic ties to snow, like my good friend Joe Bushy there, um, they've been shortchanged big time on plowing. Um, and the outlook might not be great for uh, the coming uh, months here, despite memories we all have of s a snowstorm fraught March and April. On Monday, uh, weather.com meteorologist Chris Dulce posted predictions that included pie charts for snowfall to come in major cities across the states. Um, and he was quoted as saying, although March has produced some major snowstorms in history, the overall odds for snow are decreasing each day as we head towards the end of winter. All right, uh, we'll just wrap up with a few notes here um, by checking out the uh, the forecast coming up. We talked about uh, looking ahead, of course, wintry mix, the word everybody's using for what's going on out there right now. It's going to continue into the evening. So if you're on the road, be safe. Uh, put those studded snows to work. We'll get a little bit of snow, showers, wind coming up tomorrow. Then we get a good streak. Uh, Sunday to Tuesday, we'll be up in the 40s again with uh, mostly sunny. The wintry mix strikes again next Wednesday and Thursday. So that's our uh, little little bit of weather for you. That's about all I got for you tonight. I'm going to head out and enjoy the weekend, as I hope all of you will too. But before we wrap, a couple of notes here. Tonight, the Winter Carnival continues with their murder mystery dinner performed by the Vermont Theater Company at the American Legion tomorrow at 1 p.m. and BCTV viewers can enjoy the ninth annual collegiate a cappella concert at 8 p.m. tonight right here on Channel 8 and a 10 p.m. showing of the Vernon Select Board Candidates Forum two clicks up the dial on Channel 10 at 10 p.m. All right, that's a full lid, everybody. Uh, thanks for checking in with me. I'll just do what I always say around uh, this time for BCTV and 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden. Good night, everybody.
Take a living.